We're really, really honored to have Fred Mountain tonight, and I, I'm just thrilled that um, he is here and also here in, in New York. Um, we, were, we needed him, I think. <laughs> Yay, welcome, Fred. Uh, really welcome from the bottom of my heart. So glad to have you in our strange city, and anything we can do to help you feel at home here. <laughs> so, um, I saw Fred, for the first time I saw Fred Reed, it was at Bard College, and he talked about a conversation with a friend about Hurricane Katrina, where he talked about how it was so large that he couldn't outrace it. And I'm sorry if I'm paraphrasing it. Um, this encounter and that how that was like race, that it's so large that you can't outrun it. And I, I just think about that all the time, that Fred is able to go to that macro, macro level um, and, and see that largeness of an issue that we all live in, inside that I think we is so um, not useful but necessary for us to realize that we, we live inside this and that's what we're writing inside as, as poets and thinking inside as thinkers. Um, so that, that just was an amazing moment to hear that at, at Bard. Um, and then in his writing too, uh, he goes from that macro to yet these amazing moments, even on a micro level between people. Like I, I was looking at that poem, Laura's Al Alone Time, which is a seemingly simple poem, but just encapsulates this relation of, of being with another person on that micro level, yet within this macro <laughs> level, which is so difficult to operate between those two scales. And I think Fred goes into, into that space into that journey um, in writing, in poetry, and thinking with that. Um, and I, I really feel like going forward as a poet, I know that that's been absolutely necessary for me, trying to figure out this baffling space that we're, we're writing into. Um, so in the, in the piece, the chapbook, Day from Day, he talks a lot about placelessness transparency and the transparency of art and the invisibility of art. And I, I also find that a really useful conversation for artists and writers to think about how our work is, is transparent and whether that's a, a good place to be in terms of resistance as an artist or is that a, do we need to be more opaque and turn to opaqueness? Um, really, what is it to be an artist and writer in this world today, which is such a question, um, and I think Fred's writing is, is a great space to begin looking into that question. He's also the author of Consent Not to Be a Single Being in the Break, The Aesthetics of the Black Radical Tradition, Hewson's Tavern, B. Jenkins, The Field Trio, The Little Edges, The Service Porch, and he's a co-author with Stefano Harney of the Undercommons, Fugitive Planning and Black Study, and the Poetics of the Undercommons. And with Wu Sang, um, Who Touched Me? So um, please welcome Fred Moten. Thank you very much, Marcel. And I want to thank all the folks from Belladonna. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's really nice to be here, good to be in New York. Um, should I raise this up, or is this okay? <laughs> Can I raise it up? Yeah, because I don't know. <laughs> is, that, is that comfortable? Yeah. So I have to read some stuff off of my computer. I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to. Um, so basically, um, This is a, 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 I don't know, I mean, some writing that I did um, for a catalog uh, for a, a, a friend and great filmmaker uh, named John Acompra. So it's called A Turn with John Acompra. The greatest films are the ones that exhaust cinema, thereby taking us back into cinema's ground, its condition of possibility. That kind of cultivation is concerned neither with origin nor originality. 
It is a practice rather of incessant digging, the constant turning over of that ground, its continual erosion in the name of a fecundity that is both ancient and unprecedented. John of Comfort isn't the first to induce mitosis in the cinematic frame and auditorium. It's just that with his audiovisual mobilization of the diptych, cinema turns into a problematic of the turn, rather, or in addition to a problematic of the cut. Perspective blurs tra traversal as we descend from frame to frame into the screen's imaginal depths. Point of entry become point of view's displacement. In a comfort's literalization of cinema's developmentally necessary deployment of Fisher, as if in forensic reconstruction of a Mybridgian necessary, uh, as if in forensic reconstruction of a Mybridgian trace long since lost and only, and only intermittently found, the cut allows the page to return in ruptural loosening of the fold, demanding and allowing an old practice of reading that requires the page's actual incision. Cinema cuts so that it can turn but in its commitment to the break and its proliferation, has cinema ever really taken up the task of the break's inhabitation, that lingering cursive enactment of version, torque, torsion, twist, and turn? The turn in question here cannot be held in or by narrative. Though what emerges is a cinema of the open book, the verso, el converso, a cinema of the turn, and even if there is a plot, or deeper still, a plot's apposition, the image moves against the grain of building, of picturing, that interplay of subjection and portraiture, and into a common place of turning out, the non-place, the murdered universality of the refugee, the non-citizen, whose incapacity for narrative is best understood as a scarring of the story's flesh, an unmappable contour of the general wound, a disruptive complication of rounding or worlding, a microspherical transience. It's not an accident that arrivals ubiquitous imposition and impossibility, the terrible chance of global positioning's extended genocidal displacement of indigeneity's essential itinerance is a, com is a conference theme. All throughout his work, it is as if the refusal of conquest's denial has become Dutch mastery's resistant animation. In auto de fe, turn in serrated intensification of the cart cuts sharpness, activates blur, and thereby moves in complication of seriality, of development, as fugitivity's constantly unemancipated dissonance, its implied refusal of hard rows held tones. This exploration follows a comfort's engagement with Stuart Hall, the triptych of the unfinished conversation, its turning, its conversions, in the wake of the nine muses, and its questioning instantiation of what Rene Green calls cinematic migration, the anticipatory counterforce and counterfacticity of the forced, whose commitment to and dependence upon narratives alternative has been a comfort's constant study since Handsworth songs. These films combine to indicate the amazing discomposition of a massive and unprecedented water music, where the sea is doubly elemental in its roiling, its unearthing and re-earthing, its salvage and surrender in the tidal rhythm of washing up and washing out. This ubiquity of water, this cold, relentless curacy, is where the trace of crossing is brought to bear on the work of turning. Have we converted? Perhaps then we will have entered the history of the turn, the history of the co-presence of the turned page, of the two places at once, of post-cinematic, post-montagic, post-migratory blur, by the grace of an absolute non-locality. Post-migratory because at last you can't get there from here, and no one ever really departs or arrives in this endless homelessness, this always being removed. With the imperative to tell the story, cinema mustn't extend the reign of narrative and portraiture. In this imperative, cinema blurs the line supposedly dividing story and experiment. The cinema of the open book, of the commonplace, is a cinema of rub, feel, brush, within a general and generative amniosis. This conversive fluidity and absolution is a poetics of the non-in-between, 
The cuts turn in binding, where we begin in refusal of beginning and end, imminently aesthetic in the more plus less than one, inseparable in surf and rain, circling against time seizure, fallen, damned, waiting, serving, hysterically malingering, feloniously sphering, walking, remaining, conversing, converting, burning, turning in this unbroken act of faith. Uh, this is something I wrote for this friend of mine, uh, a guy named Bob Coleman, who passed away a few years ago. He was a, he was a, a graduate student in the University of California Berkeley English Department. And he never actually got his degree. He um, got caught in some shit that a lot of people got caught in in the, you know, in the 80s, where universities decided they finally needed to hire some black people. So they rushed to hire grad students who weren't finished and just put them in the ringer of a continually sort of neoliberal sort of machine that constantly demanded of them more teaching and more work never got them, never giving them a chance to actually do their teaching or their work. Um, and but every once in a while, Bob would kind of come and hang out on the steps of Wheeler Hall. And uh, I, I'm, I don't know, I shouldn't talk about him so much, but I'm hoping that what I say is a good description. Bob Coleman on the steps of Wheeler. I would hear, I'm so full, I'm so tired. Now this was carried as a brilliant smile. Fullness is the river of my friend's smile. The river is overflown and there can be no portrait. I'm so full. I'm so tired of this version of the stairway and a hollow building. There can be no portrait, but there is a porch, an easement, an ease of reception and extremity, of welcome and having never been welcome. What I would hear in the sight of my friend was this undertone turned into something we could share. He was there as what had always been, having found a way to give himself away through that half solitude they try to make you try to ask for. What was always there was that holding of our hands out when the night gets thick. He would tell us lightly all about that, just in passing, smiling, here, here. I'm so full, I'm so tired, I'm your patient ancestor. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> this is something, I'm probably not supposed to read it. I started working on it this morning, but I, just, I was thinking about it before. The <laughs> Doesn't even have a title. I'm not even going to tell you where it comes from. <laughs> There's too much pointed repeating to point at being caught up in. The overall is all over the place, numberless in the thick and thin. No place to go is all over the place. Shifters, riffless because the splits are staggered, get their drink on. Echoes can't get located, obvious things gone aviary, map flying all over the place. We're missing the overall. You're missing the overall. This way, free, that way, green, stuck way out like this. When don't you know the days are broad? Outnumbered, parenthetical finger pointing around the corner, won't straighten all up and can't straighten how you straighten up in the morning. All your voices unraveling while your voices lounge in the overall. What pleasure had these tracks laid down? Nothing but all that shifting, how the road turns over the edge of anything you be trying to do. Let's call this song exactly what it is. In lieu of its name, let's call it you or y'all. All y'all up in there started flying out of place, started missing, started can't get started, won't fly right, can't get it straight, can't turn it loose, but there it go, and now it's gone, and there y'all go again, can call it, but can't point to it. Y'all keep saying that's what I'm talking about, don't even sound right, and now you want an index? And that's just what y'all be, be always talking about with all the voices in your voices and their outstretched hands. The overall is alert to this dancing more than singing, y'all said. And there's a hand jive with some presence in it all throughout, but no place special, off to the side, glancing at all the colors in 33rd. Level, degree, 
flickering resource back and forth all over the place. Amarillo all over the place is sunlight, calling exactly what it is, but pointing out only so we can say what it feels when we describe it. Get it all down to the point of it being all y'all all over the damn place. It feels terrible. It feels terribly beautiful everywhere you went. This is something that uh, really is a collaborative effort between a great musician named George, James Gordon Williams and my friend, the great artist, Sine Wood, who's sitting right here. Something we did together a couple weeks ago in uh, Syracuse. It's called the General Bomb, B-A-L-M. But it could be B-O-M-B, too. But not for me twice, staggered, looping, it's cool, too, because the density is light, phonic sparkle. Flesh ropes the body it waits for when three threads are in fans and brushes under the duress of implotment and possession. Immersion ruptures solitude no matter what. We can't breathe forever. We look for air pockets, an informal market on the corner, the club, a chapel made of bottle trees. Every last breath, we want to breathe somebody so beautiful and refusing, illuminating high water everywhere, graphic and quartering ourselves, Anna solid in embrace. Wasn't nobody but some chords and various anti-states and jingles. Blackness is arpeggiation and displacement. Blackness is swimming. Can't quite let the water go or be. We harp on the water. The blackness of the whole thing is that our flesh lights up the world, the ringing, the bubbles, the particles appear to fade in suspense. What else might happen to us folds us in. Not but amniotic wail. We're whales. We hate the world. We love the word horror, our whirlpool pianism, our practice, our saturated name. So I read something from a from day from this new golden chapbook. <laughs> I think I'm going to try to see I, how much time do I have? I don't even know how much time. Uh, so, yeah, um, read like maybe the first three pages and the last three pages. Okay. Okay. So, it's like a, it's basically stuff from like my notebook, but, but so I'm not going to read the dates. Or should I read the dates? I don't know. I don't know. You can't read the dates. Read the dates. But see, I mean, no, I can't read the dates. Um, although it's an interesting question. <laughs> the big. Uh, the political economy of the art world and the academy is such that here I am addressing white people. But my addressing white people doesn't mean the work is addressed to white people. The work is addressed to no one at all. As Prince used to say, please come. What I learned from Zora, Dara, world is dry land, earth is water. Our inhabitation is posthumous and prenatal. The shit is posthumous and preternatural. In the muck, the swamp on shore, wading, wading, wade, bathing. We laugh to keep from laughing like a tremendous submachine. The earthliness of black life is irreducibly marine. Digging is a kind of diving. Having been returned to the sea, we see that shit. Keeping our head above water so we can dive, dig. Amphibian, ungrounded and undergrounded, and anagrounded life. At sea, adrift, as prehistory of an already given fallenness. Black life is wet, like when Mackie tends to certain fluidities of gait. The brutal clearing, land, forgetting the river's memory, Tony Morrison says in Mississippi. Sine Woods says the escapist sings rose in summer, while singing I never learned to swim. What's it like to look at and listen to blackness, hybridizing poetry and criticism? 
What is it to hesitate forever to call oneself a poet? To disappear in a loose arrangement of flowers? Slave narrative isn't the genre in which one gives an account of slavery in oneself. Slave narrative is the disappearance of oneself and the diffusion of slavery in the giving, which can't be accounted for of the account. Just be making something all the time so you can use it to be making something with somebody all the time. Maybe the distinction is, being, which is between empathy and empathy, one emerging from a point of view, the other occurring in shatter and embrace, Tyrion, Tarion, but who knows which is which. Maybe it all goes back to the same black Athenic vehemence, passion, an infeeling of outness sung for the caravan. Ain't no nonviolent way to look at it. The camera pans down, moves down, spiraling into the wine and urine stained hallway. And what the camera moves toward as I, I, a hand that somehow was and is the camera, the hands gesture at and with and in all this beauty, being the camera's motion, it's having fallen, in fallenness, is all that beauty. Lorenzo Moton, Humanity C, April 17, 2017, 14. The smile of life is a blackbird. The blackbird is the creator of a happy living. You see the sun, a garden, a river, a blackbird shall be seen. A blackbird brings joy to the world. Black is the base of a drawing and an art piece. Black is the color of the sky when stars shine. Black is my culture and color. Whiteness is a set of interpersonal relations. The only good white person stopped. Renewing the delineation of and attention to the concept and materiality of anti-blackness is essential. But blackness's most fundamental difference, its essential entanglement, is not to anti-blackness, but to black people. Anti-blackness is not the set of interracially interpersonal injuries. It's a genocidal and geocidal force of endlessly bloody distraction, a tractor beam used for the Earth's displacement, miscreants trying to put where they live in their pockets. We neither occupy nor have, but rather share space-time. We share it to shards, du noir, the lived experience of blackness fucking up the ingenuine article. Resistance is an atmospheric condition whose relation to power, which is derivative of resistance, is itself derivative. What if resistance were preservative, unrestricted, explosive endogamy? We tend to think of anti-blackness as the denial of personhood to black persons. It's also the imposition of personhood upon blackness. It's raining men. I wish it would rain, but when I enter black study, my feelings will get their exercise elsewhere along the road to my disappearance. Is there an etymological and then perhaps conceptual connection between a parent and a parent? Zo, so beautiful you let me disappear. Does AJ think all that he says and theorizes of cinema's extravagance of the image is somehow compatible with some fullness of the black subject? But what if AJ, in moving through the very idea, the very image of the individual, is movement through the individual as well? An exposure of the inseparability, the common roots of the visual and the vigil. What is the vigil? an anti-sensual seeing and separation and of it. Then the visual is the sensual register regulated such that the assumption is confirmed. Black visual intonation, dynamic visual phenomena are given most emphatically in black topological existences, refusal of the visual and the visual. Seeing is blind if you can't hear. Blurs not only in but of the visual an exogamous swerve or spin, a calibanalistic curve or curse that animates it from the beginning by way of a detoxification that eradicates the taint and scourge of purity. Of would have been outside. Hear that? Funk not only moves, it can remove, dig, dive. Maybe that's all life is anyway, that dance, the open necessity of that contingency. 
And then it's down to the direction of fit regarding invitation and acceptance. Who dead? What would it be for the dead to get down like that? Dead in the constancy of 40 little deaths, dead in the hope of not having to deal with death. Whiteness is vampirically on the side, one by one. Join us down here, we say, as Rankin says, we say, to every shade. Hospitality is the austere, unlonely office of the homeless. Gotta learn to see through things. Gotta learn to love being seen through. Things are transparencies, lenses, not like open caskets through American pictures, but what, in turning from the elusive, delusional density of that thing, might have let lovers get down in the environment. The work is vestibular in its disappearance, when disappearance ain't just vanishing, but radical indivisibility that opposes itself in radical presence to the merely apparent. The disappearing, radical presence is disappearance. It's like some lotion made of a lyrical steel. What if the art world is just a formal conspiracy to make sure that the nothing that is seen through is displaced by things that can only be seen when they're the only things to see? What it is to see through a radical presence is obscured by desire for the monument, the mirror of the dead, which, with sound logic and absent morals, identifies transparent instrumentality as a degraded antagonist. The work is a disappearing passage to the socio-ecological plane. Imagine an echo-musicological museology to arrange the scene you set in R and C. Stephen Feld's field, James Baldwin's scene. Why destroy a Schutz when you can destroy a Rembrandt or a Rothko? I used to know all these people who knew how to see through shit. Then I find myself here. Man is a singularity one all but can't help but believe in, but all can do it easy. Our shit is stoically subhistorical. Neoliberalism, in one aspect, is a concerted attempt to obscure the essential and essentially exclusionary relation of identity and politics, which is better known as liberalism. It's ashamed of where it comes from, a cold city built on a dry marsh. Lots of loose talk about hills and light, but here we come, the wet crudescence of the marsh the much more than malarial denizens of Lemurai, anti and anti-aristocratic swarm. Disaggregated, we're constrained to use identity as a weapon against the motherfuckers who invented it. Little pellets, bitter little old bullets, little billy pullets, twiddle bullshitters, our primary target is identity. This paradox lets us find ourselves. Enlightened, we're constrained to see politics as a weapon against murderers and their intentions. Our primary target is politics. This paradox obscures us. We try to protect ourselves from them and forget to protect us from ourselves. Why is there something rather than nothing so devils can steal it? Art militates against our terrible capacity to devolve into subjectivity. Violence is all it is. Beauty is the whole in what you see through. World is a picture. The personal occupation of a point of view is that picture's condition of possibility. If one can occupy that point of view or take that picture, then one can be pictured too. This reflective picturing of space-time is Newton's physics and Kant's metaphysics doing the nasty, unmoved, without moving, or just not moving all that good. Corrigenda for Gail Jones. Does Corregidora come to correct or is she a thing to be corrected? Does she bear correction? Must she bear correction? Is her bearing alive? Can she bear, as Alex might say, that orsinic inability to bear the music we bear? We got an ear for unbearable detail, as Alex might say. Can't stop, won't stop when we can't get it, when we get enough. Can't call it, can't claim it, ain't mine, sing it, can't say it, run tell that degenerate sound. Defective gourd and cold flow bam, unbjorn baby. Mama, come on, can't come son, won't come. It's a cold, cold coming, it's like ice around my heart. I know I'm gonna quit somebody, 
Every time this feeling starts, we done made us some connections. We cut your hard and lonely will off. We wound your death and play that back is more than just not you. This you? Nah, this just not you, my beautiful sister. Black is so much more than just not you, it hurts. Give me more, give me more, I want it, I like it. Party on fire, then I'm gone. Nothing to correct, cause it's all connected. Slave song isn't properly oppositional because it ain't properly autobiographical. All it tells is nobody's story, assuming the opposition, generation after impossible generation. As the word disguise coolly reveals itself. The concealment of identity understood as a disavowal or displacement of appearance. To disguise is to cover by way of a kind of uncovering. It marks the mutual orbit of concealment and unconcealment, obscurity and revelation, hiding and showing, disappearance and monstrosity, bad habit, strange habit, off in habitation. Anti-blackness is not personal, but is it experienced personally? If so, is that experience real or true? No, it's way more fucked up than the real thing. Works of art are to be seen, but art only works if it's seen through. It's queerness, it's gym-like quadrophenic black bitchiness, it's nothingness, is its, is its transparency, it's transience. To be seen through is to can't help but move. Is there a book of transparencies for which cinema prepares us? The Anna Cinematic isn't a return to the book, it's the book's transparency. Dance of the turn and fold, not cut or tear, which ain't about rendering things transparent, but about enacting the transparency through which we see no things. We see through things. Regarding this disregard in the open air, black art is criticism in the afternoon.